Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So good afternoon people welcome to this live session on the course on Good afternoon, people. Welcome to this live session on the course on, on human behavior. So uh, I am online today. And the way we do these sessions is I take up questions that you have and I try to solve those questions for you. Now you have a couple of ways through which you can send in your questions. There is this team session which is currently going on. You can send in your questions through this team session. You can also put in your questions through the live YouTube feed. line excel sheet which you can put your questions to so <clears throat> let's then get started your suggestions regarding this course and with the limited knowledge that i have about this sub Hello. So, uh, hello, am I audible now? Hello. Yeah, good afternoon. So, uh, please put up your question. There was some problem on my end. So, I went offline for a few seconds. Now, I'm back online. Start putting your questions. So, Hello, am I audible now? Yeah, good afternoon. So, uh, please put up your question. There was some problem on my end. So, I went offline for a few seconds. Now, back online, start putting your questions. 
Right, so students who are with me, please put up your questions. <coughs> So, Aditya Rana, uh, the questions, uh, some questions uh, you will get from the assignment, but a lot of questions will not be from the assignment. So, these are new questions and uh, these questions are based on the assignment, but they are not exactly assignment questions. As for the dates, the dates for the exam are mentioned on uh, the NPTEL website. So please refer to the NPTEL website and you would have a better idea in terms of what are the dates for the exam. Hello. 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 Uh huh. Hi, Rika Bolia.
Hello, can you hear me now? Right, so uh, I went offline for a few seconds, but I'm back again. And so I'll start taking up your questions. And the question uh, that we had was about the assignment. So questions that you would get would not be directly from the assignment. And then I have uh, Gurung Joshi's question, which is about the confirmation for the exam date. So these dates are mentioned on uh, the NPTEL website. Please refer to the website. Just for fun has a question saying that, sir, can you discuss about the questions pattern in the exam? So the question pattern in the exam is going to be multiple choice questions. There'll be 50 in number and each question carries a weight of two marks, makes it 100 uh, marks question paper. Avani has a question, so the pattern of the question will be the MCQ or theory based exam. So uh, the questions would be The questions would be uh, multiple choice questions. Then I have uh, another question, uh, which is from Gurung Joshi about changing the dates. So please write to NPTEL about changing the dates. Uh, <coughs> Aditya Rana has a question, which is about uh, the Theory based questions. So no, Aditya, we don't have theory based questions. All questions which are asked would be multiple choice question. Just for fun has a question. So can you discuss about the question pattern marking scheme? Question pattern is, uh, as I said, uh, multiple choice questions and the marking scheme is two marks per question. There are no negative marks. So you get two marks per uh, getting an answer correct. Gurum Joshi, what would be the difficulty level of the questions? The difficulty level of the questions, Guru, uh, would be um, mediocre difficulty, easy to mediocre difficulty, and it is uh, most questions would be based on the assignment. Uh, so they won't be direct copy of the assignment questions, but they'll be based on the assignment. The pattern in which uh, we uh, uh, we do these exams is some questions. Uh, and some marks from the assignment are added. Then your final marks from uh, your exam is added and you get a final score out of it. Sarvush Tiwari has a question. Sir, kindly explain changes in facial expression sometimes causes rather than mirror changes in emotional feeling. Thank you. So Saroj, uh, changes in facial expression sometimes causes mirrors. Changes in emotional feeling. Uh, I what I don't understand Saroj is uh, exactly what are you trying to uh, put through this question. So from, from what I understand you believe or uh, your question is about how facial expressions causes emotional feelings. Mirroring of emotional feeling is something which I'm not concerned or, or, or I'm not clear about. If you put this question uh, in a more uh, lucid form or if you can come online and explain this question to me in this, probably I would answer your question in a much better way. Now, uh, about changes in uh, facial expressions causing emotional feelings, the reason being is that there are certain physiological basis to uh, uh, changes in feeling due to changes in expression. And I've discussed this example where uh, you can put a pencil in your mouth uh, within the lips or you can push it deep within uh, further in your mouth. So if you have the pencil uh, within your lips, the expression that you get uh, would be different because your mouth would not form a smile. But if you push the pencil deep within your mouth with open up and it will uh, portray like a smile and so you'll get a feeling of smile. Now uh, about the mirroring part, I'm not sure uh, what is it that you want to ask, but if you can uh, put a little bit um, more specific in this question, maybe I can answer this question. So Gurung has a question. Can you explain a little bit about consumer psychology? Sure, Gurung. So consumer psychology is uh, part of psychology. 
and uh, what we do here is we st study consumers. So the pattern of consumer behavior in this we divide the consumer psychology in two parts. One which is to do uh, deal with consumer cognitions and the other is to deal with how consumers purchase. So what we look at is uh, what kind of uh, market related uh, research goes on before uh, bringing up a product or how consumer makes decision about buying products <laughs> and uh, 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 marketers what kind of philosophy that they have or what kind of uh, uh, empirical research they do while bring, bringing up a product to market. On the other hand, we look at consumer cognitions, for example, consumers personality, consumers attitude, consumers uh, cognition and how all of these combine together to uh, form something called consumers purchase intention and then consumer purchase. So these are the two parts that we look in and uh, we try to understand in consumer psychology. Right, so uh, if there are other questions, I would uh, like to take this question. I hope I am audible to people who are connected with me today. I'll also take a couple of questions from uh, this Excel sheet, which has been circulated. And so the first question is from Sondarya R. And there is no question per se. It says good, so I don't know how to answer this question. On the other hand, I have D. Ujwal, uh, who's a faculty, and uh, Mr. Ujwal has a question saying that uh, he wants me to share talent management slides. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure, Mr. Ujwal, you are in the wrong class because uh, I never taught talent management and neither I had any presentation on talent management. So please uh, refer to the right uh, subject matter expert for this uh, question. Right. So I hope Gurung, you have some idea about what consumer psychology does. Now I have Avani uh, questions. So what would be the av average to pass the exam? So generally, uh, I guess it is relative grading. So giving you an, a floating average would be difficult, uh, but Generically, it will be around 30, 25 to 30. That should be the average and uh, which makes around 10 to 15 questions. Correct. Guru, thank you. So thank you, Guru. Poonam has a question. Good afternoon, sir. Can you share the name of some psychology journals? So Poonam, which kind of journal are you uh, uh, referring to? Which kind of area are you working in? The best journals in psychology are published by the American Psychological Association. These journals are uh, the Journal of uh, Psychological Bulletin or you have the Journal of Psychological Review. So these kind of journals are available and you can look at that. Then you have a lot of journals. So there is a whole lot of journals published from different publishers. You have to be very specific as to which area you are looking into and then I can uh, provide you a couple of names for journals in your area. Uh, for example, the area that I work in is uh, related to human cognition and memory. And so very good journals in this area is uh, the Psychological Bulletin, of course, and the Psychological Review. And beside that, we have the Journal of Experimental Psychology, Learning, Memory and Cognition. And we have Journal of Applied Psychology, Journal of Cognitive Psychology, the neurobiology of learning and memory. So these are the journals that uh, I look forward for publishing. Uh, similarly, each area has a different journal. And if you would be uh, sharing what your area of interest is, maybe I can provide you which journal you should be looking into. OK, so you need clinical journals. So uh, Nidhi Yadav, good afternoon Nidhi. Gurung Yoshi, sir, whatever study material you have used during the course is very informative and knowledge enhancing. Thank you, Guru. Uh, these are all coming from some book or the other. There's uh, some books that I have referred to directly. There are some books that I have referred to indirectly. So it's an amalgam of a lot of books, uh, but appreciation is always welcome. Thank you. Uh, so uh, Punam, you need journals in uh, clinical journals. So 
uh, you can look at journal of uh, clinical psychology or uh, there are journals on schizophrenia psychotic disorders uh, you can uh, visit the site of american psychological association apa and there you can find journals if you do not get journals there log into something called sciencedirect.com and this sciencedirect.com is a database and it has a lot of journals if you cannot visit sciencedirect.com try logging into pubmed.com this is the national library of medicine for the united states and they are also a database and they have a lot of journals so depending on which clinical area that you are uh, looking into you can log into one of these uh, websites and these websites are uh, the databases that host a lot of journals online and probably you can find the journal of your choice there is also some journals by springer so go to springer or you can go to blackwell or uh, valley and they also provide you uh, this option where you can specify the area that you're looking to and they will list the journals for you so this is the best method for finding a journal <clears throat> so uh, gudong you have a question which says that can you suggest some books which are in simple language so uh, most books gurung are in simple language uh, now what language do you prefer if you prefer hindi there are a number of books which are in hindi uh, which are written very nicely and uh, in english if you want there is a, a book by baron uh, and uh, the best book i would suggest is atkinson and shifrin uh, it's not i'm sorry it's not atkinson and shifrin so the best book is uh, Uh, by baron and uh, at this point of time uh, i i don't remember the author is atkinson one of the author is atkinson so you can refer to those books uh, um, there are a lot of books so right now at the top of my head i have these two authors and the books by them they are very nicely written very easily written and it is uh, it it is it would be a pleasure to follow these books so if you can follow these books that would be of great help so uh avani has a question sir the assignment marks will also be added in the results yes avani some assignments uh, marks would be added to uh, your final exam marks so some percentage of marks from a few assignment that you have performed well in would be added to your final score and that is how the final score should be calculated now sam has a question sir where can we find the explanation of the assignment answers it is uh, there in the book so you can uh, look at the videos there are some questions which are not directly from the video so those are derived questions those questions if you want to find answers you can look at certain books uh, you can also uh, write directly these questions that you don't understand on the forum and so somebody would reply and if nobody replies on the forum and you are not satisfied with answers on the forum and with the book you can put the question uh, to me in a, uh, in in an email and whenever i get the time i will answer those questions so uh, the books the internet there is a lot of place where you can find answer to questions which are there in the assignment but i don't think uh, you would need to go that far if you follow the course and if you follow the content of the course most answers can be derived from whatever the lecture uh, de delivers and the books that are recommended for the lectures <clears throat> so chavi has a question sir is the material provided enough yes chavi the material that has been provided in the course is enough if you look at the transcripts and if you look at the course uh, material it should be more than enough for your exams punam has a question thank you so much sir so she does has a question she has a thanks so thank you punam gurung joshi thank you gurung uh, avni has a question sir can you suggest some books to get more knowledge about psychology sure avni what do you want to know about psychology uh, the depends upon what book i should be suggesting if you're looking at popular books then uh, probably you can refer to uh, some of uh, the books by uh, prominent writers like there is a book called thinking fast and slow which has been written by daniel kahneman uh, daniel kahneman uh, recently died a couple of days ago and he was a nobel prize winner so talks about how 
uh, human behavior and uh, economic behavior amalgamate together to form a new theory of behavioral economics. So uh, that kind of book or you have other popular books. So depending on your interest, you can uh, probably go for uh, buying these books. Start with the basic books. So basic books are on uh, introduction to psychology and depending on what you like. If you like social psychology, there are certain books for social psychology. If you like clinical psychology, there are other books for clinical psychology which you should be reading. So depending on uh, what your interest is. So the first thing would be to develop an interest which area of psychology you want to uh, read more. And once you are clear with your area, probably uh, you can look for more advanced books in that area. Saroj uh, has a question, sir, please explain motion after effects. So motion after effect is a phenomena which uh, happens uh, because the way the eye adjusts to uh, relative motion or motion uh, is is a little bit uh, lacked. So motion after effects is the same phenomena uh, which happens to you when you travel on your boat and you are uh, moving on the boat and you are looking at a hill and uh, soon enough you will see the hill also moving in the opposite direction or making some kind of a motion. It would appear that you are static and the hill is moving, whereas the brain tells that the hill is not moving, but uh, you are moving and the hill is static. So this kind of effects, these kind of illusions which are generated by uh, different uh, perceptions from your vestibular system and uh, your uh, 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 ocular system, which is the visual system and the vestibular, vestibular system, they give you two different inputs and based on these inputs or based on contradictory information which is coming from these two inputs, this kind of illusion happens and this is motion after effect. I hope uh, uh, you um, understand what uh, it is all about and you can read more about motion after effects in one of the books that I have mentioned in the course. Other people who are here, so please go ahead, start asking your questions. I hope I'm audible to you. Uh, throughout this session. <coughs> uh, so please uh, do write if you can uh, hear me. So one simple uh, message that I'm audible would be enough. So people who are hearing, please give me a feedback. It sometimes happens that I'm not able to uh, hear. Uh, since I'm not able to hear myself, uh, it becomes difficult to know if I'm audible or not. So uh, Please let me know if I'm audible or not. So uh, other questions who are uh, other people who are here, please also put up your questions. I hope I can answer them. If you have suggestions regarding this course, please put up your suggestions. I'll try to uh, take up your suggestions and feedbacks and make the course more in more interesting. So. Uh, People who are here, please put up your questions. <coughs> Thank you, Av Avni. And other people who are here, please uh, start putting your questions, asking questions that you have. Uh, again, for your purpose, the exam dates are fixed. They cannot be changed. Then um, questions in the exam are going to be multiple choice questions. These are 15 number. Two, uh, two marks for each question, which makes it a hundred mark question paper. These questions uh, are not directly from the assignment, but they are uh, they are framed according to assignment questions. Questions level of difficulty would be mediocre difficulty to uh, uh, to to easy uh, difficulty. If you follow the your videos and if you uh, if, if if you read a little bit of uh, what has been provided to you as as uh, lecture notes. Or if you refer to one of the books which have been suggested, you will do wonderful in the exam. So this course is easy and if you have questions, if you don't understand something, put those questions onto the forum. Somebody will reply to them. If it is 
uh, that you don't get satisfied with answers on the forum, you can write an email directly to me and I will answer those questions for you. So, Guru, so out of the contact question here, uh, how's the IIT campus, academic wise, uh, campus wise? So, uh, Guru, uh, first I'll take the campus wise. So it's a beautiful campus, it's all uh, mountains all around, and uh, you have small lakes, and it's, it's a pleasure to the eyes. It's nature at its best that you have in this campus. Academic wise also, the campus is uh, good in academics. I would say excellent in ac academics and we are standing some second or third in uh, the all India and all Asia ranking. So uh, very good in terms of academics as well as the environment in which the students get to uh, study. So wonderful place to study and wonderful place to have fun and learn. Other people who are here are also ask you to put in your questions. If there are concepts that you didn't understand, I, I, I also uh, understand that most of you are not from psychology, so you are studying psychology for the first time and it would become difficult for you to understand some of the concepts. So if you don't understand the concept, you can ask as many times as you want those questions and I'll try to explain you in the most easiest possible form uh, what these questions mean and uh, what these concepts mean. Probably understanding one of these concepts is going to help you at some point of time. Uh, so that is what uh, my aim would be. Uh, as for uh, your aim, we are here online. You have get, got this opportunity, so ask questions, whatever questions that you have. You can always provide a feedback or a suggestion to me, and I can take these suggestions and uh, make uh, necessary changes in the course because it is you who provide the feedback uh, and, and then which can help uh, making the course much better to a much larger audience. So uh, people who are here, please put up your questions suggestions, feedback. I'm here for the next uh, half an hour or so. And till that point of time, uh, if you have questions, please go ahead and put up your questions. So people, questions. I hope I have answered all the questions. Another question that was put to me was whether it will be a theory based or a multiple choice question. So the exams would be theory wise, uh, theory, uh, not theory based, but multiple choice questions. So the, the multiple questions are based on theories, but in the exam, no theory would be asked. So that is how the pattern of the exam would be. <coughs> so people who are here with me, Please go ahead, ask your questions. I'm here for another 20, 25 odd minutes. Take this opportunity to ask this question. This is the last online uh, discussion that we are having. So take this opportunity to ask all those questions that uh, you would love, uh, love to know about. And I try to answer those questions for you. People, please start asking your questions. Any other question that you have? I hope I'm audible. So people, please ask your questions. I'm here live. Okay, Sam, so you want to know Sachter and Singer's theory of emotion? Okay, very good. So the idea was uh, that emotions are 
uh, happening because of uh, what uh, action you do. So uh, basically the James Lang theory and the Kennan and Bard theory both were about physiology and uh, feelings. And what they uh, believed is which comes first, whether the physiology comes first or the feeling comes first. And uh, they uh, both Satchter and Singer and uh, uh, James and Lang were interested in this phenomena. What Satchter and Singer did was he suggested that feelings and uh, the physiology, they <clears throat> do happen together or they do happen in a sequence. But before somebody feels something, there is another process of cognition involved. So what Sashter and Singer said is that the way you think about something decides how you're going to feel and will also lead to a similar physiology. So if uh, let's say that I show you a tiger and uh, the tiger is not a real tiger, but made of wool. Now your cognition will tell you that this tiger is made of wool and so it, it cannot harm you in any way. And so your, your feeling and your action would be different. But assuming that I show you a real tiger, then your perception of this tiger would be entirely different and the emotion and the physiology would be different. In the first case, you would uh, feel uh, some other emotion, maybe uh, an emotion of surprise or an emotion of uh, pleasantness or some other emotion and you would not run away. But in the second case, when you see the tiger, uh, your cognition says that the tiger is real and by uh, doing some primary evaluation, which is called uh, a primary appraisal, primary cognitive appraisal, you believe that this tiger is real. In those cases, you will fear, start feeling afraid and you will also start running. So uh, instead of dealing with the question of which comes first, whether the feeling comes first or whether the physiology, which is the action comes first, Sashter and Singer said that this feeling and, and the physiology is preceded by a cognition and the cognition decides how you feel. I hope uh, that answers your question. So Saroj has a question. Kindly explain during problem solving how information is transferred to conscious processing. So uh, how when your information process, when you're processing information and when it is transferred to conscious processing, uh, this happens through uh, a semantic episodic kind of a uh, uh, interface. So what happens is in your uh, uh, when when you are processing an in information or when you are uh, uh, when you are trying to solve a problem, the problem is in the form of uh, a, a question and the rules to this question is in, in an unconscious form, which is in a kind of an episodic knowledge. And so the transfer of this rules into a more uh, uh, semantic knowledge. Just from or from a episodic to a semantic or a semantic to an episodic form of uh, 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 thing. So this conscious processing is basically the processing of rules, which is at at the before the solving of the problem in unconscious form. But when the problem comes into question, it becomes more conscious. So this is how the transfer happens. What I'm trying to explain to you is that solutions to problem lie in using rules and these rules mostly are in unconscious form. When you start solving these problems, these rules are converted and uh, they are mapped and they are transformed in such a way that they can be applicable to this problem. And so they become conscious in this way. The rules get life and this life or uh, this conscious uh, form of the rule can now be modified, played upon, and used in solving the problem. So Guru has a question, sir. Uh, how can I prepare for the exam for, from the busy schedule? So the concepts are overwhelming, so I do need to mug up the things. Now, one of the things that Guru, you need to understand is that mugging is not the solution. Uh, the best solution would be try and understand the concept. Also, uh, the best approach that you would uh, take to get good marks in this uh, particular exam is not deal every concept, but deal some of the concepts. See, the 
bold batches come to people who score the highest. And one way of scoring the highest is to get a question correct. For that, you specify out of 10 or uh, 11 uh, different uh, topics which have been covered, which topics would you like to focus on? First, take those topics and try to understand those topics and leave the other harder topics. That way, at least you will score a decent enough marks. And if time permits, you can go to those topics which uh, are difficult for you and devote time to those topics and that way the whole syllabus. So start with the easiest and then go to the most difficult. I understand that it is a busy schedule and then uh, doing things uh, and reading is uh, difficult with, with the kind of schedule that most people have. But uh, I believe spending an hour or two um, in, in a weekend would be more than enough for getting very good scores in your exam. So if you can uh, spend a couple of hours um, in each weekend, I think that should be more than enough for uh, preparing for the exam and getting good marks. Sam, thank you. So thank you, Sam. Poonam sir, kindly explain cognitive appraisal and emotion. So uh, as I was explaining a moment before, cognitive appraisal has to do with finding reasons for an action. So uh, remembering uh, from the previous example, so if I show you a big tiger and this tiger has every uh, feature like a real tiger, the only fact is that it is made up of cloth. Cognitive appraisal is that process through which I try to identify or try to find out those markers which make this cloth tiger different from a real tiger. Cognitive uh, appraisal is the process of evaluating a situation as to what the situation is and how I should proceed with this. This process is called cognitive appraisal. People have cognitions. And through these cognitions, they try to make meaning of things. And once they get some meaning, whether correct or incorrect, that decides the feeling and the physiology related to it. This is how cognitive appraisal is related to the physiology and the feeling related to an emotion. <clears throat> so, uh, Gurung Joshi, thank you. And Poonam, I hope I answered your question uh, to your desire. So, please go ahead ask more questions uh, and all those people who are uh, with me here today, I'd also ask them to ask questions, start putting up your questions and then I can answer them for you. If you have some feedbacks and suggestions, also you can pin these feedbacks and suggestions on uh, the uh, online chat forum and other forums also. And suppose uh, you don't have a question right now and you, uh, may uh, want to ask a question later on. That is also possible. The only thing that you have to do is put these questions on the forum and then I'll answer those questions for you. Or if uh, uh, you, you don't get a reply in the forum, you can post these questions to me directly to my email and depending on the availability of time, I can reply the answers uh, to your questions. Uh, so this is the last online forum. So please go ahead, ask your questions and I'm here for another uh, 10 minutes. So please, if you have questions, go ahead, ask. We started a little bit late. There's some issues with the internet connection, but I'm back again and uh, we had a very good session. So please uh, start asking your questions. So people who are here, please ask your questions. <clears throat> so all those learners who are live with me, Please ask your questions. All the learners who had wished a good afternoon to me, good afternoon to you. Thank you for asking such wonderful questions and being here, taking our time from your schedule and being here for this live session.
So SK has a question, sir, there is chance in the exam date or is it only on 21st April? So SK, um, these decisions are taken by NPTEL IIT Madras. So uh, I have no say in it and I guess they don't change the dates for exam. So it would just fixed. Munandar, so you have a question, sir. Can you explain Cannon and Bard and James Lang theory of emotion? So Cannon and Bard and James Lang theory of emotion uh, goes this way. Uh, whereas James Lang believe that emotion and the feeling of emotion and the physiology related to uh, emotion, they follow one after the another. And uh, the sequence is not decided, but J Cannon and Bard says that you feel emotion and uh, you also have the physiology of the emotion at the same point of time. So assuming that you see a tiger, James uh, James Lang uh, theory says that either you first feel the fear out of seeing the tiger and then you run or it, it may be that you run and because of that you may feel the fear. Karen and Bart makes an improvement says that you feel the fear and you start running at the same point of time. Such a Rensinger makes an addition to it, says that first people evaluate whether I should be afraid of the situation or what reaction should I do in this situation. And based on that, they feel and then they make an action. And there are other theories which adds on to this. So the primary difference is where does the feeling and physiology come, whether it happens simultaneously or whether it comes one after another. And that is the difference between James Lang theory and Kennedy and Bart theory. So no, uh, Tiwari has a question. Please explain syntax and productivity. So, uh, sorry, Saroj Kumar has a question. So uh, syntax and uh, productivity. So productivity is the property of language where you can use certain small sets of uh, sentences or small sets of words and from there create multiple words. So there are 26 letters in the English language and some basic syntax, grammars, and through that all uh, sentences can be produced. Now for productivity, um, how children learn uh, language productivity is if you have heard about this game where uh, small children first make sentences uh, like I, I'll eat ice cream and then they keep on adding to it saying that I keep ice cream and then I'll eat something and then I'll eat something and they keep on increasing the length of the sentence. So this is productivity. Syntax. Syntax is the structure of a sentence. Semantics is the meaning and syntax is the structure. Just like computer programming, syntax says what goes where. The typical syntax that English language use is called the subject, verb, object or the SVO and uh, other languages have different syntaxes. So syntax is basically the rule of writing a language or uh, speaking a a particular language. Semantics, on the other hand, deals with the meaning that is generated in through a language. So I hope that uh, is clear to you. So Poonam, uh, that is a question. Kindly explain the facial feedback hypothesis. So facial feedback hypothesis of emotion basically says that your faces have a say in your feeling or your emotion. What facial feedback hypothesis would suggest is uh, that the way the face uh, take shape or the way uh, you feel can be represented on your face. It is uh, the other way around also. If you contour your face or if you uh, form your face in such a way that it is similar to the expression in sadness or, uh, in, or happiness, you will start feeling that emotions. The reason is that there are micro expressions that the, uh, that the faces uh, produce and these expressions are read by the higher cognitive centers of the brain and they are interpreted in a similar way. Faces are the mirror to your uh, feelings and emotions and the way your feelings and emotions are are reflected on your face. So facial face feedback hypothesis basically suggests that your facial, uh, the faces display or they provide a feedback to what you are feeling. SK, so thank you. Thank you, SK. And now other people who have connected with me, if you have questions, please go ahead, ask your questions. I have uh, some five odd minutes left. Please, if you have questions, go ahead, ask your questions. And I hope for other people who have joined with me today, uh, I could answer with some satisfaction some of your questions. If not, please go ahead, write these questions back to me on the forum. If you think that there is something that I missed and you need 
uh, more explanation on it, write the question back to me and I will uh, provide you with more answers and uh, more specific uh, answers to you. So uh, those people who are here, you have some five more minutes to ask questions. Go ahead. And it, it, it I had a really wonderful time doing this uh, online session. So I'll wait for another five minutes and then I'll sign off. <coughs> OK, so I don't think there are any more questions left for me for today, so. I'll probably sign off, so thank you for being here. I had a wonderful time answering your questions and I hope in future you take more courses uh, which I have developed and uh, we'll get more chances to meet online and uh, solve. Problems that you have in learning these courses. Thank you and goodbye.